when Storm was announced, uh, one of the most interesting things about her was her weather deck, right? The weather deck didn't seem like it was going to be anything special. It was four cards that basically get switched in and out, and it affected every single character on the board. And I can say after actually playing her and in practice, uh, the weather deck and her deck in general is a lot more interesting than, uh, than I thought it was going to be. That's for sure. So we're going to go through her cards, talk a bit about her, talk a bit about my experience with her, and um, yeah, and, and uh, do this whole review thing. So let's jump in to first her alter ego side. Three recovery, which is kind of low, um, especially for solo play. I always want it to be like four or higher. So three is not bad, but it's, 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 it's not as bad. Uh, because one of her supports, which we'll get into in a bit. She has six hand six hand size, 10 hit points, which is pretty good. Uh, she starts the game with the weather deck, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, and then in the very beginning during setup, you choose a support from the weather deck and put it into play. Um, there's a little bit of strategy with this that we'll get into a bit. Um, but basically just throw one of the four out there uh, for now. And we'll, we'll get into why. Certain ones matter and certain ones don't. So Storm stat line is a little weaker than what we've been seeing recently with a 1-2-1. One, one. It's not terrible by any means, but it, it's fine. She drops down to 5 hand size. So her weather control action is that you could swap your weather support in play with a support of your choice from the weather deck. Resolve the special ability on your weather support in play. Limit once per round. Uh, this is pretty, pretty interesting because it's a free resolve of the special ability on it. So, for example, if you swap in Clear Skies, um, each character gains stalwart. So, this includes your enemies, your minions, whatever. Like, characters, everyone, right? But the special is that you get to draw one card. So right in the beginning, if you want to draw a card, you would swap in this card to draw that card. Uh, Hurricane gives everyone retaliate, um, but you get to remove two threat from a scheme, which is really, really nice. Basically, each round, uh, or I'm sorry, not each round, but each time you swap this in, it's like a free two threat removal. This one adds one damage to every single character, uh, which can be really huge when you pair it with the right allies. Um, and we'll get more into how I like to build her out so far. But um, this, this can be great. And then you deal two damage to an enemy. And then Blizzard, uh, each character gets minus one attack. And you get to choose a non-elite minion until the end of the round. Treat that minion's text box as if it were blank, except for the traits. Blizzard, to me, is the weakest one out of all of them. Or the one I played the least. Um, there's definitely certain minions that's nice to like knock out their text box and whatever. Um, but some of the worst text boxes belong to elite minions. Um, this isn't all of them, of course, but this was the one I just personally found myself playing the least amount. Uh, but yeah, you would just swap in whatever one you want each round and you do its special ability, right? So if you wanted to alternate between Hurricane, uh, Thunderstorm to deal, or to remove two threat, to deal two damage, you could do that. Throw in a clear skies to get some card draw. It's really, really good. Really, really strong stuff. So getting into her cards... I don't know why that's highlighting it. Um, Storm's Crown is a two-cost upgrade, and she gets plus one thwart, right? So this brings her up to a two-two-one hero. <clears throat> and you can exhaust Storm's Crown to generate the printed resource on your weather support. This is really kind of key, because uh, we're going to be seeing that a bunch of her cards are really expensive. In general, her kit is really expensive. Um, and it's probably the biggest downfall of her not the not downfall but the, the biggest fault i guess i would say is that her her kit in general is very expensive so next also we have storm's cape it's three cost upgrade uh storm gets plus one defense against the aerial trait it's kind of weird that they're giving her the aerial trait uh you know on her hero card she's flying and in general she just kind of flies but then i guess she can't but what, whatever that's just a weird little thing but again i like when they're experimenting with aerial um i i like a lot of the aerial cards so i'm happy they're they're really leaning into that so after you resolve the special ability on your weather support exhaust storms cape to ready storm so what's really nice about this right is when it's your turn you can thwart or attack with storm switch your weather card to activate its special ability whatever you want it to be and then you exhaust storm's cape to ready storm back up uh this has been like a right a really nice like easy combo to basically ready yourself up over and over and over it's really kind of nice um i really like storm's cape i found it i found it to be one of the cards i i, I really went out of my way to, to put in there because it was just nice to be able to ready up and go back down 
Um, all right, so uh, Ororos, I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing it. I know, I'm terrible. Uh, it's a one-cost support, her garden. Um, it's an alter ego action. You exhaust this garden to heal two damage from your identity. This is huge, right? I know she only has three recovery, but essentially, if you flip down, you can use this, hopefully, to heal two. Not really have to exhaust her unless you do um, to heal up, and then the next turn, heal the other two on this. So in, in one cycle around, right, you can heal for four. Uh, pretty strong card in that sense, but this is her only alter ego card, uh, which is kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, it's definitely definitely decent. So Weather Goddess is kind of cool to play around with. It's a zero cost event. Uh, swap your weather support in play with a support of your choice from the weather deck. Resolve its special ability. So again, if you want to kind of like bounce back and forth from go from like clear skies, use your action to do the two damage on thunderstorm, and then to jump back to to clear skies, right, to draw another card, and all you had to do was play this, like you could do that like it's kind of interesting in the in especially for solo how much you can bounce the weather around and how kind of easy it is to bounce it around because there are three of these cards in your deck and this is a part i think where storm is surprisingly strong for solo because if i was doing this in a multiplayer game um i think the the timing would have to be a lot more important right you don't want to affect everyone else at the, the table but you don't want to like mess up your turn either so multiplayer i could see her being a little more difficult i, I only played her two-handed like once and just trying to balance it all out was kind of weird of course when i play two-handed i just focused more on storm anyway so i just did everything that worked best for her and my other hero i just didn't worry about as much but in solo because you're able to change the weather deck so much to whatever you basically need at that time uh makes it pretty strong it makes this card pretty strong um, again, just being able to to activate those special two threat removal, two damage, or draw a card like over and over and over is really useful. All right, so Torrential Rain is kind of interesting. Um, the two costs, three threat removal, right? And if Hurricane is in play, and Hurricane is, oh my gosh, it keeps highlighting. Um, Hurricane is this one that removes the two threat. If that was in play, then you can remove another two threat. Right. So if you set it up where you have whatever um, whatever weather in play, you switch to hurricane, you activate special ability through your hero action. It's two threat removal. You pay two for this card. Right. So that removes three and then you remove another two really quickly. You can see how she can handle threat super, super fast. Right. She, she, if there's a ton of threat in the board, what that that action I just laid out there removes seven threat from the board, um, which is kind of nuts. And this one is removed three threat from among schemes at play, which is really, really nice. Um, this one, on the other hand, is removed two threat from a scheme, right? So it's kind of nice in that sense that like, okay, you focus two on the on one scheme, three you can remove however you need to remove it, and then you can do the special ability again to remove another two from a scheme. So the timing kind of matters and the order of operations kind of matter. But in general, this can be a super good card. And, and this is her deck in a nutshell is that you really want to make sure that whatever uh, event you're going to play, you want to match up her weather event to it because it just makes it so much stronger. So there's three of those cards in play. This is her big attack card, and this was kind of just gross, in my opinion, grossly good. Lightning Bolt is a three cost, uh, eight damage card, right? This is the standard damage amount. But again, if you start off your turn and you switch to Thunderstorm, you deal two damage. You then go to Lightning Bolt, deal eight damage, paying for three. So now you're up to a total of 10 damage, but then you do the special ability again, you're at 12 damage done, and your hero can still swing for three damage. Now, that doesn't include you swinging for three damage and then using the special ability, then using you know Storm's Cape to ready yourself up and being able to swing for another three damage. I was able to, in several of my games, um, knock out the villain from full health to no health in one round pretty easily. Like when she's built out just a little bit, right? Really with just like Storm's Cape. Um, it, it's kind of insane how much damage she could do all of a sudden. Or if you need to split it up, right? You do Thunderstorm, you do two damage off of somebody. You do your eight damage off of a Lightning Bolt. And then um, you do two more damage by resolving uh, the special ability to do two more damage to an enemy. And then you could just swing for damage. Now, the only thing that makes this weaker in a sense is that... Um, Certain uh, certain heroes that have big swings like this nowadays are coming all uh, coming in with overkill, right? So if you want to hit a minion and do overkill damage, you don't have that. But there's enough um, 
aggression cards out there. Like I think it's marked as the upgrade or support. I forgot which one it is. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen where you can just attach it to a minion and then you get overkill on that minion. Um, because of things like that, I found myself playing Storm in more aggression type decks. Justice, I don't mind. Protection was was okay. I didn't really love her for protection. Um, but Justice and aggression, you can play some really cheap attack cards. Uh, for example, in the aggression deck, um, there's the one aerial card uh, I'll put up on screen. It's one cost, four damage pitchback. It's a one cost, uh, four damage card after you swing for damage. It's a really cheap card. And I found myself whenever I built out with aspect cards is I want to use cheap cards because again, her, her lightning bolt, there is what? There's two of them, two of them in here, three costs. Um, but her other big cards also three costs. They're kind of expensive, right? In general, her, her kit is, is pretty expensive. Um, okay, so... We'll get into more of this stuff in a second. But the other thing I want to note actually really fast too is all this stuff is superpowers. Um, so once again, death focus, really, really, really important. She does have her resource generator, which helps out a lot with Storm's Crown. And now with the announcement of Rogue, we know that there's going to be, uh, what is it, X-Gene or whatever it's called, where if uh, she's a mutant, which she is, you can put the card in play and then you can use as a resource generator for hero-specific cards. So after this cycle is done, like Storm is just going to get more and more and more powerful. Like it, it, it's kind of insane how strong she's going to be. Okay, so Flash Freeze is her defense card, uh, which isn't bad. I, I, I like it, I think, more than some other people do. But basically, one cost event, when the villain attacks you, the villain each minion engaged with you gets minus three uh, while attacking you this phase. All right, so, and then Blizzard's in play, you can activate Blizzard, uh, just to, to remind you that's the whole this whole thing. And that would give each character minus one attack. So if you have Blizzard in play, uh, it'd be minus four attack. But if you have Hurricane in play, you would gain Retaliate. And this is the kind of the way I like to actually play this with, with Hurricane in play. And you get the minus three. So hopefully if they are doing damage to you, it's not a lot. You don't have to spend a defense and you get to retaliate on top of it, which is something I used a fair amount, which was just a nice way to like knock off a little bit of damage. What's really nice about this is when in a uh, a gang up or whatever card comes out where the villain activates against you multiple times right for a one cost event if you have the villain that activates twice against you it's it's not like one time this this works right it's when the villain attacks you the villain each mini engage with you gets minus three attack while attacking you this phase so how I understand that is that it would affect the villain the entire time man now maybe they'll do a rules change maybe that's not quite what it is but how I read that today is it would affect the villain all the way through, right? If they did it again. So, um, yeah, anyway, that's that's pretty strong in that sense. Now, again, that's a very specific scenario just in general. Um, you know, it, it's it's pretty strong with just minus three. I, I know I know not a lot of people love it because we've seen a lot of things with like uh, Kitty Pry, right? Shadow Cat that just like negates all damage and whatever. I get like things like that is stronger, but I still, I, I enjoy this card for what it was. All right. And then her last big card is Blast of Wind. Uh, it's a three cost event. Choose a player, deal three damage to the villain and each mini engage that player. And then you resolve the special ability of your weather support. So it doesn't matter which weather you support you have in play. Any one of them um, will do that ability. So for example, if clear skies is in play, you get to draw a card, right? Um, or remove two threat or do two extra damage after you just did three to everything. Blast of Wind was played probably the least amount for me um, because the three for three isn't that great, but if she got swarmed by minions, it's not that bad, right? It's not that bad of a card. So it's pretty strong. So there are some fun things you could do that, with this card um, with gathering up minions and, and really playing an aggression deck. And that's to say, in general, I felt like her aggression, her in aggression was what I enjoyed playing with her the most. I built out a little bit. I use aggression as some cheap attacks. Um, and I like aggression minions in general, like Wolverine, because Wolverine is so incredibly strong being able to knock off Pierce that I'd rather just kind of stack him up, get him really strong, and let him attack each round. While her thwarting capabilities is really strong. It's really, really strong in general. So justice isn't bad, but aggression I love her in. All right, so her obligation, claustrophobia, uh, flip to alter ego form. This isn't an option, yet, right? You have to flip to alter ego form. You cannot change forms, and you have to exhaust her in alter ego to remove this card. It's kind of a different obligation. Um, it, it's interesting to see. It's not, like, terrible, um, but, you know, it, it's if you didn't want to flip and you had a big turn in mind, that part stinks. Um, 
but in general, it's not it's not the worst card. It's a, it's a pretty tame obligation. Her nemesis is can be rough. Can do a lot of damage really fast, right? With uh, Callisto, Quick Strike one three five. When Knife Flight Treachery is revealed, give Callisto a tough status, which makes it a little bit tougher. She gets her uh, the there's a boost icon that uh, comes in with Leader of the Morlocks. Uh, the player who defeated this scheme searches the encounter deck and discard pile for says I for knife fight and reveals it. What's knife fight? Well, we'll get to that in a second. There we go. Uh, so an alter ego, you gain search, but on the hero side, choose an enemy with the highest attack and take damage equal to its attack. Right. So it's not that you get to like be attacked by the amount. You just have to take the damage. Right, that's that's kind of rough. Um, now, whatever your attack is, you also do damage back to that person, which is like an interesting concept. But generally speaking, you're you're probably gonna get hit by a by a pretty big attack that you really can't do anything about. So that could be rough. And then Switchblade added on to her makes her a five attack. And then if you have you know Thunderstorm in play or whatever, and then she's up to a six attack. I mean, you look at just like straight up taking six damage to the face, which is pretty pretty rough. And then you doing like a three back. So. Her nemesis uh, kind of stunk to get. It, it wasn't like the worst thing in the world, but it, uh, it was definitely on the uh, tougher side, I think so. Anyway, that is Storm in a nutshell. Um, she's fantastic, right? I don't know what to say other than that. I, I, I have been blown away by Wolverine. Wolverine, we figured, would be a good solo hero because it just like thematically makes the most sense. Storm, I would have figured, would have been another one of those team X-Men, like make the most sense as a team. And again, as a team, I think she can make sense, but I think she's really complicated in the in the in in the sense that you have to plan out a lot more that's going on on the table, right? You have to make sure you're not affecting all your other teammates with whatever weather support you put into play, and you want to kind of maximize it so that everyone you know gets the best round possible. So. I could see Storm being really tough in those situations. Like as you add more people, Storm being harder and harder to play. For solo though, it's great because it's just whatever benefits me the most at the time. And I'm just going to throw in whatever weather works best for me. And the fact that I can basically put a whatever one in for free that I want, that's not the one that's currently in play, right? And then do its special ability. Threat removal is so incredibly easy with her. Pinging damage here and there is really easy. Her attacks are super strong. Her kit in general is just really good. I mean, it's really good. And um, yeah, I have to say, she's she's one of my bigger surprises. Um, you know, I know Shadowcat's still probably my biggest surprise because I really didn't see her being as strong as she is. Storm's right up there too. Wolverine, we are kind of uh, all expected to be pretty good. Storm, I think most people were like, yeah, it's, it's going to be fine. But the weather deck on paper never seemed like that great of a thing. Right, just like okay, the the what you could do for special things is pretty basic, right? Nothing too exciting. But in practice, once you play her, uh, what she, what she could do is bonkers, right? She could do some really tough stuff, and to the point that I've faced most of the villains on standard, with the exception of like Ronin, Venom, Goblin, which I, I just need to make a better deck for. But she steamrolls them. Like she she does not have that much of a of a hard time going against them. Her biggest weakness is her cost curve. But again, as more cards come out to help lower that, really I'm looking at uh what is it, Rogue's X Gene. Um as more and more cards come out, um I think it's just gonna make her that much better, right? And that everything is a superpower, it helps a lot. And that she does have a built-in resource generator is fantastic. Then you could put an X Jet too, which if you want, but it's a three cost card, which is already kind of expensive. So maybe you only have to do that. But there there's so many resource generators that are coming out for X-Men right now that uh, I, I think it makes it really, really makes her even stronger and, and arguably probably one of the strongest heroes in the game. Um, she's up there. She's, she's definitely up there. So anyway, very long story short, um, I like Storm. She's a lot better than I thought she was going to be. Um, it's always fun. It's always really cool to see. Uh, not that it's a super new mechanic, but it's a pretty interesting mechanic with how the weather thing works in actual practice and how it plays off all the cards i think that's really cool um yeah uh, she's just she's strong so anyway let me know your thoughts scroll down a bit hit the like button hit subscribe leave me a comment let me know your thoughts of storm what do you think do you think she's strong do you think maybe she's uh too strong um especially if you're a multiplayer i want to hear your experiences with her in multiplayer um has she been really good for multiplayer and, but yeah for solo I, I think she's absolutely bonkers i think she's really good and uh Again, I think she's going to just keep getting stronger each time. So, all right. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you all next time.